In 13 years, three months and five days, the 21st century will be with us. Close enough for tomorrow's world to do something we rarely do, make predictions. Later in the series, in a regular feature called Tomorrow's World 2000, we'll be speculating about the home of the future, how we'll spend our leisure, whether the office as we know it will exist. And if we do still travel to work, how will we get there? Will this be the shape of cars to come? It's your car, I assume, is it, Peter? I'd never drive anything else. Now, once I get inside it, you'll see a few differences. It's a concept car, designed and built specially to try out new ideas. And the main thing you notice is no instruments. What you have instead is a screen which lights up and the system even includes this. It's a satellite navigation system which gets you where you want to go with the minimum of hassle. Well, more about the car of the future in a future programme. But onboard navigation systems are already being developed. Maggie's been to the Transport and Road Research Laboratory to investigate. OK, so it may not look futuristic, but this is a highly intelligent car. Go left onto the A3095. Thank you. This navigation system is a prototype. In the boot, you've got a computer with a bubble memory, which has got a map stored on it. And the computer can work out where you are from the direction and the distance which the car has travelled. So all I have to do is to key in where I started from this morning and where I'm going to, and the computer will tell me how to get there. End of journey, 1.5 miles ahead. Here at the government's road research laboratory at Crowthorn, they're not convinced that this is a system of the future. It does have limitations. It's only as up-to-date as the day you bought it, so you won't be going down any new roads, and it certainly can't guide you around traffic jams, which is where a completely different approach comes in. This Range Rover relies on computers at the side of the road. As before, first I key in my destination, only this time it's in code form. And this is the code for Windsor. Right, we're ready. The unit in the car sends out a radio signal from a transmitter behind the number plate. Loops buried in the road pick up this signal, passing it on to a roadside computer, which then sends a signal back, telling the car which way to go. A355, turn right. So far, pretty much the same. But this system has one great advantage, and that's that it can be kept bang up to date. Well, perhaps the best way of explaining how all that works is to use this map of Oxford. So let's say I'm coming towards Oxford on the A40, and I want to get right to the other side, leaving Oxford on the A420. So normally, the quickest route would be to go around the ring road. So let's just see if the computer agrees. Go left. Onto the A4142. Right, so that's what I do. Heading towards another junction now. Go straight on onto the A4142. And on we go. Now, as I move from junction to junction, the onboard computer is constantly being interrogated by the roadside computers as to how long it's taken me to travel from one junction to the next. And just say, when I reach to this point here, there'd been a bit of a pile-up and it took me 15 minutes rather than the usual five to get to here. Well, the roadside computers would immediately inform a central computer and the central computer would let all the roadside computers know about it. So if someone else was following me and they came to here, then rather than being advised to follow the ring road... Go straight on onto the A420. There. They'd be told to go straight on through the centre of Oxford, because that would be their best bet. And the other great thing about this system is that it's cheap for the drivers. The most expensive part are these roadside computers. So the question is, who's going to pay for them? Well, tomorrow a discussion document is being published by the Department of Transport to try and arrive at answers to that and many other questions, including what kind of system do we, the public, really want? With Germany already advanced with its own system, Britain is anxious not to get left out in developing a European network. 